Christmas in Australia is all I've ever known. The month of December is always full of sunshine, blue skies and beach days. The garden is green and the flowers in full bloom. It's not the sort of weather for sweaters and staying inside. It's the sort of weather for summer dresses and breezy outfits and hanging out with my chickens. This is a summer Christmas in Australia and it's about time to start decorating our little home for a vintage Christmas. Hello darlings, it's the 28th of November when I'm filming this video and I thought it's about time to put up the Christmas decorations. We're actually going to be away seeing our family for the month of December, so we're not going to be able to enjoy our Christmas decorations pretty much at all until January. So I thought I'd put them up and we'll get to enjoy them for a few days before we go. I've picked up a few new or old pieces I should say since last Christmas. So I'm excited to put those things up and really I, I love Christmas. Christmas is one of the best seasons and ideally on the outside of the house I would love to absolutely deck the, uh, deck the halls, <laughs> deck the house. <laughs> pretty much check the holes. Check the house in Christmas lights so you can see them all twinkling at night but I didn't buy any lights since last year so I only have a few little lights so they're just gonna have to be a bit simple and maybe next year I can go all out and put lights all over the outside of the house. I think I'll start by putting the Christmas lights outside because they are solar paneled um, so they need a charge before they actually turn on at night and um, for those of you who don't know I am in Australia so we have a hot hot Christmas. It's actually a 29 degree day today so it's a bit toasty. I have on my summery Christmas dress fit for the occasion and um, I'm ready to get decorating, so come join me. The first outdoor electric Christmas lights in the world were introduced in the Christmas of 1880 by Thomas Edison. A man by the name of Edward H. Johnson, who was Edison's business partner, came up with the first string of electrical Christmas lights in 1882. But at this time, people still seemed to have a mistrust of electricity, so the electrical Christmas lights were not readily accepted or used until many years later to decorate homes or Christmas trees. And of course, I love to put a Christmas wreath on the door. This one is handmade with grapevines and I adorned it with some little Christmassy bits and bobs. And each year I swap out our boring old doormat for a lovely festive one that just picks you up as soon as you walk through the door. And I remove the pumpkins long overdue from October and November. And to get into the festive spirit, I put on a Christmas record and started to set up the Christmas tree. We often use fake Christmas trees here in Australia. They last longer and you just pack them down each year and take them out again for the next Christmas. In the 1930s, the first artificial Christmas tree made from brush bristles was created. It was made by the same machinery that made toilet brushes and the bristles were dyed green. Green Christmas trees weren't always popular though. The first aluminium Christmas tree was manufactured in the late 50s and was quite popular into the 60s and then faded in popularity in the 70s. Back in the 1940s and 50s, people would use these beautiful lights on the trees called bubble lights. And for about over a year, I've been trying to find authentic 1940s bubble lights. But the ones that I did find, it's not guaranteed that they work or only two of them work out of however many that were in a string of lights. So I ended up finding a reproduction bubble light brand and I purchased two packets so I'm so excited to put these up on the tree. I won't know till I turn it on, but I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with these colors. They look very retro. I'm not sure when to put these up, whether I put them on at the beginning of putting the decorations on or at the end, because everyone told me last year to put the lights on at the beginning because I put them on at the end. Um, but that's just because my whole family growing up, we always put the lights on at the end. So yes, I've learned something new with Christmas decorating. I will be putting the lights on first and then I'll put all the ornaments on. Christmas lights on trees were originally candles and the candles were attached to the living tree with melted wax or string. Can you imagine the fire hazard that would have been? Because of this, candles would only be lit each night for a few minutes while the family would sit around and admire their Christmas tree. 
but they did have at hand buckets of water and sand ready for when the tree went up in flames. In 1900, the first electric Christmas tree lights were advertised. They were quite expensive, so only the extremely rich could afford them. For a single string of lights, it cost 12 US dollars, which equals around $300 today. Bubble lights started in the United States and were sold by Noma in 1946. Noma was one of the biggest Christmas light companies in America. These bubbling lights were popular up until the 1970s, before little Christmas fairy lights that we are familiar with today started to become popular. I purchased these modern bubble lights online, and as I knew they were American, I would already bought a plug adapter so we would be able to plug it into our power points. But I didn't take into consideration the difference in voltage there might be. Um, I don't know what happened, I've been reading the instructions and I think, I don't know whether the fuse blew or it short circuited, I'm not really sure, but um, apparently I'm able to fix it, it says that you need to replace the little fuse thing. I have two of the string lights, but I'm really worried to plug it in again. James is out at the moment, so when he gets back, I'll get him to sort that out. I'm just going to keep decorating the tree because I can't waste time trying to figure this out because I have no clue how to fix it. And I hope it's not permanently damaged because they're so gorgeous and I really want to put up these bubble lights. It's really going to make the Christmas tree. So, anyway, I'm going to keep decorating. So after that little mishap, I made myself a much needed cup of tea and had some Christmassy ginger nut biscuits. I picked up some lovely vintage Christmas decorations from the thrift store. They were baubles with little decoupaged old pictures topped with pretty bows and little painted decorations that had maybe previously been in someone's family for many, many years. I think each of these unique Christmas ornaments really made the Christmas tree and gave it character and a feeling of homeliness about it. I also picked up a sweet little Christmas tree brooch from the same thrift store, which happened to go perfectly with my red and white dress. For the past few years that I have been decorating the tree in a vintage style, I have been using loose tinsel to really give it an old timey vibe. Loose tinsel was used on a lot of Christmas trees in the 1940s, and was actually a silver tinsel. I was only able to find gold tinsel, but I think it still looks absolutely beautiful glimmering against the Christmas lights. I love adorning the tree with an orange garland, I made this one a few years ago, and it has lasted and lasted, which I'm just thrilled about. I sliced the oranges and baked them in a low oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for around two and a half to three hours until the oranges are completely dry and a little bit golden. And the tree is not finished until it has been topped with a star or an angel. We have always topped our tree with an angel in our family and I think it always looks so lovely. I finally got a tree skirt to cover up the unattractive Christmas tree legs and if you haven't picked up where I buy almost everything, I got this from the thrift store. I somehow always underestimate how short I am, and that my arms aren't long enough to hang up a garland by myself. I struggled with this unruly and bendy garland for at least 5 minutes before deciding I actually really needed some help from James. Any place in the house where I can add a bit of festivity or cheer for Christmas, I will. I made this garland a year ago for Christmas, and this seems to be the perfect spot to hang it, above the sliding door which leads into the sunroom. I decorated around the living room with another garland I made with scattered red berries all throughout. And I fixed the bubble lights, thank goodness. To make sure they wouldn't go out again and blow their fuse, we found a power converter which brought down the voltage from the 240 volts from our Australian power points to something much lower than American household power points run off, which is 120 volts. I clipped on all the bubble lights, which was sometimes a little tricky getting them to stand upright. And after all the kerfuffle that the lights caused, I was so pleased with the final result. The Christmas tree truly looked so beautiful.
James and I spent a lovely Christmas evening together by the beautiful tree, watching one of our favorite Christmas movies, It's a Wonderful Life. Merry Christmas, darlings. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday and I'll see you next week for another Christmas video. Bye!